Welcome back from our farm to MST Systems YouTube channel. We're gonna to talk today about nutrition. Disclaimer, first of all, I ain't a nutritionist, I ain't a dietitian either. You motherfuckers keep asking me questions about nutrition. So I wanna just delve into a little bit because the problem in Strongman is that people have this perception that you need to eat like fucking Luke Stockman or something, you know what I mean? The, the, the strong men showcase these videos all the time about my 8,000 calorie diet, my 10,000 calorie diet. And then you get fucking Joe Bloggs under 80 thinking he needs to eat 8,000 calories. Now, here's, here's the thing. Strength training and bodybuilding, they ain't that far apart. They're not crazy different. You're still trying to gain muscle tissue and you're trying to optimize performance in the gym and you're trying to minimize body fat gain. And if you're not, then, well, it's a little silly, really. Admittedly, acutely, there are gonna be times where your nutrition might have the aim of gaining body fat and getting bigger and putting on weight. But predominantly, your nutrition wants to be more about recovering from the training sessions and putting on some decent muscle tissue whilst minimizing fat gain. Nobody wants to get fat, really, do they? I mean, if you could say, if you could say to anybody in the world, anyone at all, I can make it so that you can eat whatever you want and you'll just gain muscle, no fat. There ain't many people out there who'll be like, Nah, I don't want that. I want to get fat. Because we, we all know that body fat isn't that useful. At some points in time, it is, guys, obviously. If you're going for a big squat, a heavy yoke, whatever, you want a bit more fucking, you know, pushing for the fucking cushion, don't you know what I mean? A bit more cushion for the... What's that phrase? A bit more cushion for the pushing. Some stupid phrase. You want that. But majority of the time in your training, you don't really need that, do you? So, so nutrition doesn't need to be that much different to that of a bodybuilder. So for, for the most part, you want to make sure that your diet, can, you can be consistent with it. So you need to pick an eating model and eating structure that works for you. I like to use intermittent fasting. I like to eat between a certain period of time because it keeps me accountable to... Uh, the nutrition that I actually need versus the nutrition that I want. If I have free roam to eat 24-7, I will, you know, be snacking on stuff at night, etc. So I like to use intermittent fasting. You don't have to use intermittent fasting. You might like to, you know, just spread your meals out and you can stick to it perfectly fine. I have a little bit of different lifestyle to most people because I'm a self-employed coach. I wake up pretty late and I go to bed pretty late. So late night snacking can be a bit of a problem to me. So if I limit my thing, I've got a rule, no food after this time. Works really well for me, that's what I do. So first thing your nutrition is pick an eating structure that works for you, the individual, okay? Yeah, just fucking stick to it, basically. And second thing is you need to work out your calorie needs, all right? Everybody fucking knows this. We should do at least. It's the same as it is in bodybuilding. It's the same as if you went to a 12-week transformation and you want to lose body fat. What do you need to do? Work out your daily energy expenditure. What is it? How much do you need to maintain? Right, let's start with that. Protein-wise, you want to be going with two grams per kilo of body weight. Absolute minimum. All right, I'm actually a fan of higher. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of more, more closer to three, like two and a half to three uh, for most people. I find that, especially unless you're on P, especially natural, unless you're on PEDs, if you're on PEDs, guys, your protein synthesis is higher, so you can actually get away with less protein. A good way to think about PEDs is like increasing the miles per gallon on your car. So if you get more miles per gallon, you don't put more fuel in here because you can do more with the fuel you've got. Same with PEDs and protein if you're on things that ramp protein synthesis you can do more with less protein so you don't actually need to eat as much but if you're natural you want to be straying close to the three grams if you're if you're not natural maybe two and a half to two some people can get away with two but i think two and a half is a better range personally um if you care about protein read lamb Lam mcdonald's book on protein it's a good book so you work out your protein needs okay now once you've worked out your protein needs we've got your calories that you've worked out so let's say you had three thousand calories and you needed 200 grams of protein, okay? Times your protein by four, that's 800. You take that off of your 3,000 you're allowed. You've now got 2,200 left, all right? This is for your carbs and fats. So if you are enhanced, so you're taking testosterone, you can get away with less fats because the main role that fats are gonna do is hormone regulation. If you're taking exogenous hormones, you don't need as much fats. So you can stray a bit lower on the fat range and push the carbohydrates pretty high. That 2,200, you might get 20% from fat and 80% from carbs, more than that. Or maybe you try that, you don't feel too good. Maybe you need to up your fats and drop your carbs. Again, we can optimize this for the individual. The protein and calories are kind of set in stone. The carbs, we can kind of like optimize it. 
Now, when it comes to uh, finding the best kind of split for you, you want to basically make sure that you're feeling good because the main driver of performance and strength training is going to be feeling good in the gym. You don't want to feel lightheaded. You don't want to feel hungry. You want to be able to perform, don't you? So maybe you're going to set your carbs more around, you know, peri-workout nutrition before, during, and after training uh, so you feel good in the gym. That would be the next thing I would look to do. Now, when it comes to uh, actual food choices, again, it's going to be very individual. Here's an example, right? If I eat white rice, I don't feel like it gives me any like any energy. It doesn't really like. It's just very like. Mm, throughout the day, I'm just like. Mm, I'm, it, it for me, it digests slowly, and it doesn't seem to get in me real well. Whereas if I have something like um, a potato, a white potato, I feel real good. Like I, I could have white potato prior to the gym, I feel good. If I have white rice prior to the gym, I feel a bit lethargic. Uh, but realistically, on the GI scale and whatnot, they're, they're fairly similar carbohydrates. But everybody's going to get on with different things you know, in different ways. So you need to figure out what's good for you. Also, it's important to note that when you delve into nutrition, um, we've got protein, carbs, and fats, which are the kind of big three that everybody knows about. But things that people don't track that they need to is fiber, for example. You want to be getting roughly, as a rough guide, 10% of your carbs should be coming from fiber. So that means if you're eating 200 grams of carbs a day, you should be getting 20 grams of fiber. These are just rough guidelines, guys. I'm not setting stone rules, but just roughly. This is going to keep you, well, for starters, it's going to keep you full, it's going to keep you processing food, it's going to keep your digestive health up. But as well as that, it's just going to be able to make things more sustainable long term about coming into issues like, you know, digestive um, issues that you could get just from having a shit fiber content. Because if you're going to be doing this kind of nutrition strategy, it's going to be for a long period of time, it's going to be for years. All right, so you need to get your fiber because if you don't, over time you will regret it. Micronutrients as well. Micronutrients are huge drivers in recovery and performance. So you want to make sure you're getting a lot of micronutrients in there. I think that everybody should eat blueberries every fucking day. Okay, just make a habit of it. That's why I like to keep things simple, guys. I don't like to overcomplicate stuff. Oh, I need my micros. What should I get? Well, you can have some fucking greens powder if you want and, and eat some fucking lawnmower shit, but I ain't into that. I'll just make a set rule. I buy blueberries all the time, eat a lot of blueberries. I think they're fucking class. And, and I like to go to carrots as well. These are just the things I like to eat. So I eat carrots every day, I eat fucking blueberries every day. It's pretty simple, guys, but I'll make sure I get my micronutrients in. I think that a glucose disposal aid uh, GDA is a very, 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 very good addition to anything really. But metformin is obviously if you want to go the drug route, you can go metformin. Or if you want to get a supplement version, obviously you want to go your berberine. Glycomax from Strom Sports is the one that I use, I think it's absolutely class. Um, so you can add a GDA in there. Creatine, make sure you supplement with creatine and beta alanine. There's a supplement I have over there, which is called Basic by HR Labs. I take that every single morning as habit. It contains all the supplements that you should be loading up on as an athlete. Creatine, beta alanine, uh, Pico2, taurine, electrolytes, etc. Uh, HR Basic is an amazing way to start your day. Wake up, scoop of HR Basic. You've got everything you need to load up on. You've got electrolytes, you've got taurine, you've got your Pico2, your beta ray, everything, boom. Drink that with a liter of water. Perfect start to your day, guys. Uh, there's a supplement called Metamucil, which I do use. I tend to take that at night before bed. It's just a fiber supplement you get off Amazon. Just because me personally, I don't get as much fiber through the foods I choose to eat that I need. So I have a scoop of Metamucil at night before bed and that just keeps me regular and it get, tops my fiber up at the end of the day. I'm good for your insulin levels and uh, insulin resistance for that as well. Yeah, just building a sustainable plan guys. And once you build a sustainable plan as an athlete, you just build upon that. So you might eat the same for like eight months and then you go, you know what, I need to eat more now. I've got bigger, I'm not gaining as much tissue, my recovery doesn't feel quite as good, I'm gonna up it. So then you just up your food a little bit. If you ever get to the point where you're like, you know what, I'm struggling to up my food here, I'm getting full. Then you need to look at your carbs, okay? Uh, if you're eating slow digesting, high volume carbohydrates, and that means that you're not gonna be able, it's gonna be hard to eat regular because you've also gotta digest and process the food before you get full again. So if you get to the point where you're struggling to eat more food, you wanna go with faster digesting carbohydrate sources. So for example, instead of eating 100 grams of carbs from rice, eat 100 grams of carbs from cream of rice and you'll find that it goes down a lot easier, you'll get hungrier a lot quicker and it'll, it'll just digest better and you'll be able to move on to your next meal. Uh, same with like cereals, like, you know, having uh, cocoa pops, for example, before the gym, 
give you a load of glycogen, a load of glucose, sorry, for training. But again, it's fast digesting, it's in and it's out. You'll be able to eat again uh, pretty regular. You know, going with things like uh, fructose-based stuff like jam, jam bagels. I find jam bagels are amazing for getting carbs in. They seem to be very fast digesting and easy to eat for me. So I could easily get 150 grams of carbs in from jam bagels and then a couple of, you know, you know an hour or two later, I feel like I can eat again. Whereas if I were to, like I say, for me, rice is so, I always use rice as an example. So I eat rice, I get full. To me, rice is diet carbs because I eat rice when I'm, on a calorie restriction, because it keeps me full and I struggle to eat again in a couple of hours. I don't need to eat again. Whereas if I have cream of rice, I have the same amount of carbs, but I'm fucking starving in 15 minutes. So obviously if you, if you get to the point where you can't eat food, you need to start supplementing out certain carbs for faster digesting things. Because for most people, your carbs are gonna be the main driver of your calorie, uh, expend, uh, your calorie allowance. Because your fats are gonna be a bit lower, carbs are real high, and your Protein's gonna probably stay pretty similar. Now, if you get to the point where, you know what, I still can't eat enough, I've changed my carbs, I still can't eat enough, then we use the fats as the, the next driver. Fats are extremely easy to add into a diet because there's not a lot of volume. For example, all you gotta do is start cooking in olive oil and then you've suddenly you know, added 30 grams of fat a day, but you've not added no volume to your food. You can, um, with fats, you can just, just put stuff in stuff, you know what I mean? Add some cheese on top of your meal, throw some peanut butter in your fucking porridge, whatever it is. It doesn't add much volume with a, with a lot of calories. So you would go that route, but try, personally, I would always try and keep the fats as low as possible and drive the carbs first, personally, before I looked at the fats. Obviously, if you are one of these people that requires six, 7,000 calories a day, you ain't doing that on six grams of fat a day. You're gonna need to, and your fats in there. Another way to add fats into your diet is with your protein sources. Just move to higher fat meats. If you're on lean mints, go to high fat mints. If you've got fucking bacon medallions for breakfast, throw some sausage in there. Easy. So yeah, your nutrition guys, that's a brief overview of how to do it. It's not, it's not very complicated, is it? It's not too different to what bodybuilders will do when they're, when they're planning like a an off-season phase and bulking. You know what I mean? It's not It's not too different to that. You want to be in roughly a 500 calorie surplus at most. You don't need much more than that, guys. You don't need to be in a 2,000 calorie surplus. You, you don't. You need to be in a slight surplus. You can get stronger on maintenance calories as well and add tissue on maintenance calories, but a slight surplus will probably make you feel better. So 500 calories, that's not much. That still means you've got to track your food. That still means you've got to be aware of what you're eating. You can't just freely eat all day because you will get fat. So to wrap it up, work out your maintenance calories, okay? Work that out first. Then you're going to work out how much protein you need. Two, two and a half to three times body weight in um, grams, kilograms to grams. So if you're 100 kilos, you eat 300 grams of protein or 250 or 200, depending on whether you are genetically gifted. Basically guys, the more natty and the least genetically gifted you are, eat more protein. The more genetically gifted and more gear you're on, less protein. If you don't know if you've got good genetics, ask me. I'll, I'll be brutally honest with you. Carbohydrate wise, try and work out the remainder of your calories that you've got left after you've worked out your protein. Try and make the main driver of those calories carbohydrates if you are enhanced because you don't need hormone regulation. If you are um, natural, maybe put the fats a little higher. Find a ratio that makes you feel good with your fats and carbs. Then when it comes to increasing food as time goes on, main driver of the carbs first, then the fats. Um, calorie surplus of about 500 calories. 10% of your carbohydrates, make them fiber. Make sure you get your micronutrients in. And supplements, make sure you have supplements to top yourself up on things that you will not be getting through your your diet. Uh, I didn't mention Vic D3, I probably should have mentioned that as well. Remember guys, it ain't too crazy, is it? I haven't, I haven't given you some secret strongman diet, have I? It's the same shit that everybody knows. Strength training, people like to overcomplicate stuff. I, I see nutritionists all the time be like, I can uh, do your diet for strength and performance or to lose fat, all this. And I'm like, they're all the same thing. You're just gonna slightly manipulate the energy expenditure. Like, I don't understand, but there isn't, trust me, I have worked with, Every nutritionist there is to fucking work with. There ain't a secret method, guys. There's not a secret strongman method. There's not a strength, there's not a way to eat for strength training, okay? There isn't. There's not a way to eat for bodybuilding. They're not different, okay? If you give a strength, if you give a strength athlete a bodybuilder's diet, 
they're going to suddenly get weaker, they'll probably get stronger because most, most bodybuilders diets are way ahead in terms of quality as strength athletes because they think they don't need to. So yeah, don't look complicated guys. They fucking, it is what it is. Uh, pick, a, pick a structure as well that works for you. I intermittent fast because I like it. You don't have to though. You can do what the fuck you want to do. Your body, your rules. I give you a little bit of a plan. I give you a little bit of guidance. I give you a path to walk. It's up to you to walk it and make adjustments on the way. Yeah, remember that shit. See you next time. Hope you learned something. If not, I don't know, watch video again. Maybe you will.